Okay, so step one is to pierce the stern to set it up. So um, the pin is ultimately going to have to come through the back, but it makes sense to make the hole through the front first so you can do it precisely. So it needs to be as precise as possible. Okay. Um, be very careful you don't put it through your finger like I'm about to do. Okay. And once you've done that, we have the hole and we can put the pin through the hole and it's just in the middle. Okay, so now it's interesting if you're over. There we are. I'm going to mark up north, mark up east, south, and west, and it might also be useful just to, to draw in the circumference as well, because when you lift it off it will make things clear, so as carefully as you can, draw in the circumference. tracing paper around. So, okay, so let's first of all practice drawing uh, a great circle uh, to represent uh, a plane or structure such as bedding or cleavage. So let's say, for example, we have um, a bedding plane. Um, so our data will be regarded as S0 and um, let's pick a random strike and dip. Okay, so if you have a random strike, let's say the strike is zero, zero, three, eight. Okay, and the dip is forty-three, and it's to the southeast. Okay, this is a random, off the top of my head strike dip. So let, let's plot this as a grid circle. So first of all, we need to get this strike value. Okay. So I'm going to concentrate on the strike first. So we need to mark on the circumference where the strike is. So zero, three, eight. and each of these gradations is um, two degrees. So we're looking for for zero, three, eight. so zero, three. So this is zero, ten, twenty, thirty. So zero, three, eight is two, four, six, eight. Zero, three, eight is here. Okay. So the next step. Is to bring this strike value up to north so that we can use the template beneath to plot our grid circle. So, just before we do that, so actually, what I'm going to do is just note down 0, 3, 8, just, so to, keep, just to keep myself right. Bring this, up to, bring this up to north. Okay. And I want to plot a dip of 43 degrees. So, this is where we need this axis. Now why am I using this one? Well I know it's the southeast, so I'll just bring this back. We know it's the southeast, so we know the grid circle is going to have to come out in this direction. Okay? So we know the grid circle is going to come over here somewhere, so I bring 0, 3 it to the, the north, and we're going to draw a grid circle around here to represent a dip of 43 degrees. Now with the grid circle, this is 0, so out here is 0, and in the centre is 90. So we count in, we count in from the outside, 43, so 10, 20, 30, 40, and it's 43, each creation is 2, so 43 is here, okay, and we'll just use a template to, to complete the grid circle, so I'll, I'll just fill this in as carefully as possible, keeping between the two lines. Okay, and when I bring the tracing paper around again, we have a grid circle representing a plane which strikes 0, 3, 8 and dips 43 degrees to the southeast.
Okay, so the other way we can plot data is using um, a pole to plane. So a grid circle is um, one way of plotting plane on data, but we can also plot, plot a pole. So what I'll do actually is I'll plot, a, plot the pole to the same, uh, the same, the same data here. Um, and the key thing about plotting poles is. Um, when this is dipping southeast, so uh, for a grid circle, the grid circle bows out toward the direction of dip. Okay, so you can imagine a plane intercepting a kind of a semi -hem a hemisphere. The pole, however, the pole is perpendicular. The pole is normal to the plane. So the grid circle will go this way, but the pole for the same data will lie over here somewhere. So let's do that. So we know it's going to dip southeast, so we know the pole is going to be over here. So we move our, our strike back to north. And so the pole is opposite that. So whereas in a grid circle, you count from the outside to the center. For a pole, you count from the center to the outside. So our dip is 43 degrees, it's dipping to the southeast, so we count from the center away from the southeast, 43 degrees, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 2, 3, and we place our pole there, and that's it, we don't need to, to use any more, that's it, and we can bring north back up, and there we go. So, so the staring net without the, the background template would look like this. So we have a grid circle. And a pole. <laughs> well, that was an example of plotting planar data. So, of course, the other type of data we can have is linear data. And whereas planar data can be plotted as either a grid circle or a pole, uh, linear data can only be plotted as, as a point. So um, let's, let's pick um, random lineation. So uh, our lineation L1, and let's just say the lineation has a plunge in azimuth, which is uh, a plunge of, uh, let's, let's just pick a number, 50, Seven degrees towards um, uh, towards two nine four. Okay, so it has a plunge in azimuth. So this does we don't need direction because that's that's unique. That's unambiguous, and this is the plunge. Okay, so plunge and azimuth. So to plot the lineation. Um, we first of all need to need to, need to find the azimuth on the staring net. So two nine four. So to 70, 80, 90, 294 is here. So I like to do a little arrow like this just to keep me right, and that's 294. And we need the plunge is 57, so we need to bring this to the equator. And for a plunge, so much like dip, for a plunge we count from the outside in. So the plunge is, is 57 degrees, so we count it 57, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 6, 7 will be here. And I'll use a different symbol, I'll use a little X to distinguish it from our folded bedding. Okay, and I can return this. And here we have. Lineation, plunge and azimuth, plotted, and a bedding reading plotted as a pole, and a grid circle. So when you have lots of planar data, it's useful to plot them as poles because it's quite straightforward, and this is the only way you can really plot linear data.